Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 34 of this NHL 22 Minnesota Wild franchise mode in the state of hockey here on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner of the video. And if you do enjoy this one, make sure to show your support by dropping a like, subscribing, hitting notifications, and of course, leaving comments to interact with me. So today we get into the 2031-32 season, and the Minnesota Wild have been doing pretty well over recent history here. We've won three cups out of the last four years. The team's been on a roll. Iowa even was able to get a um, a Calder Cup there back in 27-28. And we've had some decent amount of award winners here too. Like Magnus Oduya just won the, his first Norris in his career, which is pretty impressive. Apart from that, we've had a couple decent Calder rookies. Uh, we've won lots of cons points, obviously, Michkov leading the way with three. Wallstead's won a Vesna or two here and there. Him and Bjorklund also won the Jennings. So yeah, the team is doing well. We've got lots of good players within the system. And it's really more just a matter of, you know, drafting well over the next couple seasons to build towards an even brighter future with this team. Because, really, we're just under halfway through this series, or this entire franchise mode save, and we continue to land decent prospects even in the later rounds. And really, I cannot complain about how any of these guys have really developed over the last few seasons. Like, we're just starting to see certain players, um, younger players as well, like, you know, Jermaine McGinn, Mario Cote, guys like that starting to really make the NHL lineup. Seth Jenner, you know, Troy Chen, those guys are all looking good. And of course, we got Cade Pierre as a bottle in net this year as a rookie as well. So... That's the team we're going with for this upcoming year. It's a very strong system, and I expect guys like Oduya and Weller and, you know, of course, Michkov, Felino, Rossi, that line should be able to put up ridiculous numbers. But we're going to get through a season sim. I don't think we're going to focus too, too much on how the actual simulation goes and things like that, but I think we're going to focus more on just how well the team plays throughout the year. Um, we'll probably do a halfway kind of check of 41 games, check in, then do the other 41, and see how the team's doing um, at the halfway point and at the end of the season. All right, guys, so at the halfway point of the season, 41 games in, we are currently sitting roughly third place in the league. We're behind Tampa Bay, who's got three games in hand, and the Rangers are just looking really good. So um, Jagger Foligno has got 55 points, 32 goals in just 41 games. He's off to a booming start. Matthew Boldy has 50 points as well. He has been playing amazing. And then pretty much, oh, I guess Guy Lapierre got injured. I didn't actually know he got injured, but he's on pace for a crazy season too. Um, decent points from Oduya, Javi Bullen, even Zilkin is doing all right. Um, McGinn and Mario Cote, you know, they're just not really getting enough ice time to really put up crazy numbers. But overall, you know, still decent from a lot of our guys. We've had Brendan Carlson out with injury for most of the season, so that's why Leon Koch has got more um, more games played than him. But yeah, it's just been you know fairly injury ridden season. But at the same time, twenty two out of thirty or twenty three out of thirty three for Wallstead is a very good year. Yes, he's lost ten games, but um, you know you look at his stats over his career. This is one of his better years so far. So. 23 out of 33 is looking really good. He's going to play lots of games compared to a guy like Piero Zabottle, who's one half. He hasn't been spectacular, but he hasn't been atrocious either. So um, hopefully we'll see him continue to develop as just a 21-year-old there. But yeah, that's kind of how the team's looking so far. No points for Sheldon Taylor through six games, but that happens. Uh, Stefan Gabrick leading the league, not really surprising there. Oduya's fourth in scoring right now, so hopefully he'll get those numbers up soon. For goalies, Vutalainen and Primo also putting up ridiculously good seasons. My goodness, yeah. Wallstead's, you know, Wallstead's playing really well for a 29-year-old, but at the same time, we have seen better numbers from him before. As far as rookie skaters go, Bob Del Rio, out of all players, is leading the league. McGinn's in there in that conversation, but he would start to or have to start putting up a lot more points. And Braden Point somehow has 70 four points. That's insane. Who is he playing with? Oh, he's playing with Muir's and it's got to be one other guy if they've got that many points. That's just, that's insane. I mean, don't get me wrong. Other guys like Aiden Bulbrook and McDavid and guys like that are putting up crazy numbers too, but Braden Point, 
49 assists in 44 games is just otherworldly for a 35-year-old. So keep an eye on those guys. Uh, they're going to be really good coming up here. Your league-leading goal scorer is Mears. Go figure. Felino's down in fifth. But again, he's still got games in hand. So we'll see what happens here as we get into the second half of the season. 28-11-2. Pretty decent record. Um, obviously, we want to win a few more games than that. But we'll see how the second half of the season goes. So I'll be back with you guys once we get there. The draft class is looking decent this year, um, considering we have Nashville's pick as well. It's not terrible. The Predators are in sixth in our division, so they're out of that playoff spot just, or that wild card spot. But um, hopefully we will see other teams kind of push further and harder for that in the Pacific. So that would be an, a nice lottery pick to have potentially, but we'll simulate through the rest of the season, see how it goes, and then go from there. All right, guys, so after winning the President's Trophy three seasons in a row, the Minnesota Wild will drop it off to what is going to be not the Dallas Stars, but the Tampa Bay Lightning this year. So we'll finish third in the league still. It's not a bad finish, but literally two, three more wins is all we needed to finish at the top. And a 51-23-8 record isn't the most spectacular season this team has put up in recent history. As far as team scoring goes this year, our first place team score here would be Jagger Flino with 106 points, nothing ridiculous, but we did have a lot of, you know, fairly spaced out and well-spread scoring throughout this team. 66 points for Magnus Adia is a slight drop off from last season, but he still had a fabulous um, season and campaign here. 56 points for Jakob Havi is definitely an improvement, um, second best season he's put up in, since joining the league. And, you know, 46 points for Mario Cote, not bad, 40, or 38 for McGinn. There's, there's decent players throughout this entire team, and we did have some injury-riddled kind of guys throughout the year too, which sucks, but what do you really do when those guys are sitting out for extended periods of time? It's hard to get back into the flow of the game at that point. As far as goalies go, we get 40 wins out of Volstead this year. That's actually his best season in a long time. And what's actually going to be second best in his career so far, um, he went from, yeah, 17 to 53 wins, um, which was just insane. But it's like one, two, three, four, five, six years. It's his best season in six years, um, which is pretty crazy because he was just 23 when he put up that first just like ridiculous season with us, but you know, really decent season. Cade Pierre was a bottle two eleven out of eighteen, a two one eight goals against, and a nine oh two save percentage is actually quite good for a rookie goalie. He was better than Wallstead, but Wallstead still got three shutouts this year, which is really solid. So, looking at our rookies, that's the rookie numbers. They're not too crazy, and sixty three goals for Felino is pretty impressive. But I really don't think it's going to be the best in the league by any means. So. Let's see the rest of the league, and holy Samu Heikinen, 26-year-old, puts up 75 goals in 82 games. 67 for Mears, and then Felino's there third. Uh, Bortolo, oh my goodness. Bortolo puts up 63 as well. The exact same stat line as uh, Jagger Felino. That's pretty insane. But, yeah, your best scores are um, pretty insane here. Lots of guys with wheels at the top of the league, too, I'm noticing. That seems to be a fairly effective X factor here. But uh, Kent Johnson put up 55 goals, 52 assists. Bullbrook, 87 assists. That's impressive for sure, especially as a 22-year-old. Apart from that, McDavid, Draper, Foligno, Connor Bedard in Vancouver. Oh, wow, he dropped off to a medium elite. That's interesting, um, especially because he went second overall behind Michkov. I was almost certain that he was going to be better but wow um interesting stat lines and numbers and stuff like that there dry puts up 92 points yamamoto with 90 lots of guys that had good years you know michikov in there but really his worst season in recent history um since 2025 26 where he only put up 86 points but i think he was still that was just his third year in the league which wasn't even that bad he was just like he was still getting accustomed to the NHL and, you know, balancing out his assist totals and stuff like that, although he's still 863 points in just 773 games, or 733 games. That's still insane. So, um, yeah, looking at goalies for the league, Primo wins 49 games. My goodness, that is a performance. He played 75 
Wow, he played 75 games throughout the season. Talk about, wow, Whew, that's insane. Like, how do you, what? How do you play a goalie that much? How bad's your backup at that point? That's insane. Oh my goodness. All right, apart from that, I'm kind of interested in the rookies here this year. And Mario Coat is very likely going to win the Calder this year with just 46 points. It's not really all that an impressive Calder campaign, but I do believe he led, yeah, he led all rookies, which is crazy because he didn't seem like he was really playing on that ridiculous of a level, but apparently he was, and he tops out the other guys by one, two, and six points. So that's insane. Rookie goalie wise, I was... Yeah, Wolstead's not a rookie goalie, I'm pretty sure. Just just check in there, but that's not right. Um Who was the assist leader this year? Bullbrook. 87. That's just again, that's crazy. So um yeah, crazy, crazy stat lines going on here. Really solid performances from multiple players on multiple teams. And it's gonna be an interesting playoffs coming up here. Um, I do think we are going to match up against what is likely going to be the Avalanche. I might be mistaken on that. We might end up seeing a team like... Uh, we might see a team like Anaheim. It's unlikely, but it's possible. So yeah, um, let's just advance a day, see where we end up, and maybe get into a playoff series here. But um, it will indeed be the Colorado Avalanche. We get another rivalry matchup here. This will be an interesting one because, uh, you know, of course, Colorado is a very, or they've been a very good team in recent history. They traded for Gaucher, which was a great move, um, and he's looking like he could be deadly. He's probably pushed this team into the playoffs. Dunham's still there. He should be playing further up the lineup, but he isn't. Um, 84 rated Casey Middlestad should be further up the lineup too, but they've got a really really solid defense. Why is Cody Glass playing defense? Like, do you not? Oh, Bernard Docker's injured. Okay, so that's uh, that's an interesting team there for sure, but at the same time, you know, they could definitely put up a fight if, uh, if things go well for them. All right, so we are going to take on the Avalanche in round one here. Um, hopefully this him treats us well because it's kind of been a struggle in the past here, but Getting into things, starting off with Iowa, who's in the playoffs too, they lose. But that's all right, because, you know, we're focused on trying to defend our Stanley Cup championship here. So, game number one against Colorado. It's a 7-6 to six overtime win. Five-point game for Michkov. He puts up a hat trick and two assists. That's an absolutely insane game one. That reminds me of the Oilers Avalanche series that just went on recently here, but especially in game one, two, but crazy, crazy game one. Let's see how game two goes. So game two of this series, 5-2 loss. Wow. Okay. So Colorado bounces back, really puts away five goals there easily. And as we head into game three, we need another win here because we split home ice, uh, which is not a great start to a series. So game number three, we're going to lose Graham's sword to a concussion, but we also lose 4-3 to Colorado in game three. That's not great here. Also, I didn't even show you guys how Iowa did. 61, 15, and six is a pretty absurd record. They finished first in the league. And holy Kvasha, Ruslan Kvasha puts up a 96 point season. Wow, that's absurd. Like, yes, his passing's good. I think at that point, he probably needs a passing X factor. 46 wins for Jose Strudwick. If he isn't growing as a goalie, then I don't know what's going on at this point. So that's what did I just watch? Did a defenseman seriously just win the league scoring? No, he didn't. Oh man, come on, Pierre Boutin. What are you doing? Like 24 years old. I guess Kvash is 24 too, but like a defenseman, a defenseman puts up 90, 96 points. As, oh my god, okay, that's uh, that's something I've never seen before, to be completely honest. Howden somehow tops out Strudwick, too. 47 wins as a goalie. That's pretty impressive. Jim Lizen, really good 21-year-old there. 
Um, Scarabelli, oh my god, he's gonna be sweet, okay. Um, but yeah, wow, that was, uh, that was interesting, uh, interesting for sure, and again, Stradwick's not a rookie goalie, but, wow, um, Ruslan Kavasha just went off there, but unfortunately, Iowa might get eliminated here in the upcoming game, so, we try not to go down 3-1 in both series, 3-1 in the AHL means elimination, and we do have a sweep there, Buffalo knocks out Tampa Bay. So the Presence Trophy winners don't stand a chance against the Sabres. Wow, okay. All right, and oh my goodness, we are down 3-1. to one. Well, this is going to be fun um, because, yeah, Colorado just has taken it to us here. And we are going to have to try to battle it out for survival. But not a good start to the series. Not a good halfway point in the series either. Um, Jesper Wolstead will not be getting the start for the upcoming game here. And that's all I can say. But in the AHL, they survive another day. All right. And it comes down to game five of this series. So we'll watch it nice and quick. First period, 3-1. Beautiful start. Second period, 6-1. Let's go. And we win the game 8-3. That is a, just a thrashing there. Three assists for Kasha. Not really surprising. He moves the puck very well. So, all right. Good to see. Now we get into game number six where we could potentially be eliminated, or we could see uh, the Minnesota Wild start to bounce back and gain some momentum. So first period of game six, it's a 1-1 game. Felino and Kaliev score for their respective teams. Second period, 3-1 Minnesota lead. That is looking good. Another goal from um, Felino and a goal from Mario Kot. That's exactly what we want to see. 4-1, Ben, or not Brandon, Brendan Carlson, yeah, not Ben Carlson. Goal from Miko Rantanen makes it a two-shot game with half the period left. How are we looking here? Still 4-2. All right, we're in a good spot, but looks like we are going to hold on for another game. Game, or sorry, we survived game five. We forced game six. I thought that was game six for some reason, so... All right, we win that one 4-2. Not bad. Um, we're going to make sure that Piero Zabotl gets another start. He had a really good game there. And, uh, yeah, we got to keep him in. So, all right, here we go. Game number six against the Avalanche. First period, 3-1. to one. Cote, Foligno, and Lapierre. Let's go. We get outshot. Doesn't matter, though. Second period, 5-3 to three game. Still a two-shot game. They get two power play goals, so we just got to stop taking penalties and we'll be all right. 6-3, Matthew Boldy. Let's go. 7-3, Matt Vamichkov. 8-3, Jakob Kabibulin. Oh my goodness. 9-3, Jager Foley. Oh my goodness. Did we just watch like six, five, six holes go in the net there? That was insane. Power play, are we going to hit 10? We're going to hit 10. Mario Coat. Oh my goodness. 34 shots. We just absolutely obliterated the Colorado Avalanche. They didn't stand a chance. We literally outscore them 3-1, to one, essentially. Five goals. Oh my goodness. That is the strongest simulated period I think I've ever watched. 10-3. My lord. Okay. Um, Cade Pierre's bottle, 31 out of, or 28 out of 31. Really good night from him. How about the four-point night for Oduya, Felino, and Bonnet? My goodness. Talk about a really, really solid um, night for a lot of guys there. So, wow. Okay. All right, so here we go. We will be taking on the Ra Grand Rapid Griffins in round two with the Iowa Wild. Uh, Mark Paris having a fantastic playoff so far. But against Colorado, we take them on in game seven and the last the way the last couple games have gone this shouldn't be close but first period 0-0 zero, zero game second period one nothing oh my goodness all right let's see if we can make this interesting because really our team's played phenomenal up to this point we're not playing on rookie um i think that might have been from some preseason testing um so yeah let's make sure that's on superstar jump in here and hopefully not get our butts handed to us in a really tight game All right, so here we go. Third period, game seven. It's underway, and it's a close one here in Minnesota. So 
Starting things off, Marco Rossi over to Michkov. Good chance. And, uh, all right. Gavin Hunt, top player in penalty minutes. Not really hurting that we traded him away, hey? All right, Rossi on the faceoff here. He's going to win it back. Oduya over to Rossi. His shot doesn't go through. Really, it's just a slow reaction here today. Like, that's what I'm feeling with the controllers. It's just not quite responding the way I want it to. Like, what is that pass? Oh, dear lord. We got some serious game lag going on here. All right, Jager Felino. Oh, that was that shot. All right, Gaucher. Yeah, you play that dump and chase game because that is so effective. Alright, here we go. Marco Rossi, nice stretch pass there. Rossi cutting in. Cuts to the backhand, looking for a play. Sends it right across, but Lapierre couldn't quite get there. Alright, that wasn't a charge if I've ever seen one. Goodness gracious. Call a penalty on these guys. Oh, come on, Erickson. You gotta change a little bit faster than that, buddy. Alright. Par Erickson cuts in. Oh, great chance. Just didn't quite finish it off. All right, got to get the shot off on those plays. All right, so we got some fantastic players out here on our second line in pairing, and hopefully we'll get something going here, but Guy Bonnet's got to win a face-off. Oh, okay, come on. What are we doing here, boys? What are we doing? Like, this is, there's no play to be made here. All right, here we go. Boldy, beautiful pass. Lapierre walks in, fires. Okay, not a bad shot, actually. Oh, he just crushed Merkley, though. All right, now Erickson cuts in looking for a shot that's actually a really good shot got through a lot of traffic there all right now erickson wraps it around mario coat coming down the wing nice move jermaine mcginn looking for a pass can't quite make it through the four colorado defenders coming back on the play and yeah we just need to reset here for a minute look at the pressure though like Colorado is just moving today. Oh, here we go. Fresh Jermaine McGinn. Jermaine McGinn. Beautiful chance. Oh, my goodness. Mario Coach should have finished that one off. I don't know how he didn't. It's beyond me. Shane Pinto's a piece of shit. All right. So we're halfway through this third period here, and really chances but nothing converting here for minnesota up to this point so oh who just went offside seriously like oh how dumb are you danny zilkin like seriously what are you doing what are you doing like come on that's just dumb we need opportunities we need zone time we really just need a goal here but we got to keep it together defensively here, too. So here comes Magnus Oduya, firing from a tight angle, just about actually went in. Now Krajicek out in front, finds his own rebound. Oh, dear goodness. Jakob Krajicek with opportunities. And they, we just we can't convert him right now. This Gruel guy's playing fantastic. So <sighs> low-scoring game. We've had our chances. We literally just got to convert one here. So, face off. Carlson's going to lose it. But good defense from Krajicek, who wins that puck back. We're going to set up, get it over to Oduya, who fires. Oh my goodness. Another just fantastic save. I got, I got no other words to describe how well Gruel's playing right now. He's just fantastic. So, we'll get our first line out against their fourth. Bit of a mismatch here, if we can actually win a face off and get zone time and we cannot but um interesting play there kaliev gonna get bumped off the puck almost oh middle stad beautiful move that was gorgeous although he does need to just get knocked off the puck here take it rossi there we go 
All right, Marco Rossi looking for a play, tries to center it. Nice, oh, that was a terrible pass there, Seth Jenner. What are we doing? We are letting Brendan Perlini skate with the puck. All right, here we go. Here comes Felino. tees one up. Oh, that's off the ankle. That should be a broken ankle. Oh, that's cool, okay. All right, here we go. What is that? The goalie doesn't even flinch on the shot, my goodness, all right. Well, this is fun. I love when an 81, 82 rated goalie is just playing like a freaking Vesna finalist. Like, isn't that just great? All right, there we go. Trey Weller, tease one. Oh goodness, that would have been a fantastic finish there. All right, Guy Bonnet walks in. Can't get the shot off, come on. Byram just absolutely hammered. Um, that's not a penalty, it is, okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, do ya? Finish it off, my guy. What are you doing here? All right. We're pulling the goalie. That was totally a charge. I don't know what Gaucher's thinking, but um, that's okay. We will take the penalty or the power play time and hopefully convert here. So we've got our big unit out. We've got Foligno out as an extra attacker, and this has got to be it pretty much. Oh, goodness. And we yet again lose the face off. So that's annoying. Erickson, beautiful pass up to Bonnet. Guy Bonnet cuts back, fires, hits his own guy. Now Lapierre right in front. Felino looking for a play. Doesn't find one. There it is. Oh, come on, boys. All right, we're going to put the first defensive unit out here just because they're a little bit better. I believe it's, yeah, Boldy and uh, Oduya, so... That should help, but we'll see. And yet again, Javi Bullen loses that draw. Oh, what is that? Perfect freaking bounce again over my guy's stick when he's right there. Gotta love that. Oh, Felino, beautiful pass. Drop pass. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <sighs> We're running out of time here. Like, we are seriously running out of time, so... Uh, we unfortunately put one of our best defenders in the box, but that's okay. We'll get Seth Jenner out, and hopefully he can make a difference. Face off here. Going to yet again go back the other way. Dude. Nobody ever hits the empty net from that far back. Like, he's behind center ice at that point, pretty much. So cool. Thank you for that. I totally appreciate that. NHL like come on give us a fighting chance here this is just absurd like how are you how do you do that right Merkley yeah nice clearance right in on freaking net almost too hey eh? move it Bonnet Shoot the puck! Shoot the puck! Oh my god. What what does a joystick flick mean? Apparently nothing. Here we go, Michkov. Move it. Michkov down in front! What is that? Oh, off the post! Dear goodness. Nice. I'm done. I am done with this game. We totally deserve to be knocked out based on how garbage we played. All right. Well, that's a whole penalty killed, and then the pass doesn't go through. Lapierre misses, and that's it. Thank you for skating in your own guy's lane. That was not a good play at all or anything. You deserve to hit the post there. And there you go. We're humiliated by the Colorado Avalanche in round one. 
Oh, that was rough. Okay, well, I guess we'll be getting to the draft a little earlier this year than I was expecting. Um, as a 3-4 to four Colorado round one loss makes history as far as this team has not lost in round one of the playoffs for... Let's see, what is this? Like... Seven years straight, we've made it to at least round two. And guess what? The last team that we lost in round one or round two two was the Colorado Avalanche so I guess Colorado's got our number here I mean we beat them quite a few times over the past seven years but they get the better of us today so we will be getting to the draft in the next episode but we can follow Iowa um, to start off next episode and it should be an interesting one but there you guys have it that is it for episode number 34 and we hit some serious controversy in this series. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed watching that, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe, hit notifications, and of course, make sure to leave comments to try and get featured. But that is it for me. This is Etanio signing out, and until next time.